Hey guys, Ed Bird, I'm back with an update for you on the recent poll that I run in the community section of the site and also an update on my training and races planned for the autumn season. So starting with some news of the recent viewer shoe review poll that I ran uh, on the community page. Thanks for all of you that have voted. Um, when I did check recently, I think it was earlier on today, there was over 200 votes there. So really thank you and uh, appreciate you guys voting. I do want to try and review some shoes that all of you are interested in that kind of might be things that you're thinking about purchasing yourselves. So coming out on top, there was one very clear winner really. That was the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. So that one's on the way. I managed to get that in the red colorway. So it should be here very soon. I know there have been lots of other reviews of that shoe, um, but I'm very interested and excited to see that shoe for myself, get it in hand. Apparently it is quite lightweight. I do like a nice lightweight shoe. Um, but very interested to test that out for myself. I think that one had over 55% of the vote, so certainly very, very popular choice. Second in the voting was the Nike Pegasus 36 Shield. That's recently come out. I think it came out last week. I was very tempted to pick it up while I was over in Nike Town uh, last Friday uh, in London. Uh, there was loads and loads of new stuff there, some very interesting stuff, including the Pegasus Turbo Shield as well. It's a real crazy looking shoe that one. So I have picked up the Pegasus 36 Shield as well to test out. I really enjoyed the Pegasus 36 when that came out originally uh, back in June. I managed to pick that up early and got some early miles in on that one. So I'm really, really excited to test out that perhaps against this Shield version. Um, see really if you kind of need both of them. I've got a feeling um, that it's going to come in handy. The weather's been absolutely atrocious the last couple of days. Very cold and very, very wet underfoot. In fact, casually I've been wearing the Pegasus 35s I picked up around about a year ago. I got those in a sale for a great price. I've been using them casually around town, just running some errands and things like that and they've got very, very wet. Actually, my feet have got really cold. I did comment to my wife earlier on while the wind was blowing in. I could actually feel it blowing through the front of the shoes. Um, so my feet are getting really cold and a little bit damp and wet as well. So even just wandering around the 35s didn't work out that well. So it'll be interesting to see if the Pegasus 36 Shield really does give that bigger sort of benefit, advantage and improvement. I think that had about 27% of the vote. So two very clear winners really on that poll. So thank you again, all of you for voting. Got to keep those viewers happy. It really does mean a lot to me that you take time out of your busy days to listen to my shoe rambling, so I really do appreciate it. Kev Burmaster, I will get to the Saucony as quickly as I can, as soon as I'm able to get hold of a copy. A copy? It's not an album. As soon as I get hold of a version of the shoe, I will test that one out for you. Josh Cheevers, your comment really in the uh, comment section of the community post really did urge me to get that 36 Shield, so this one's for you, buddy. Danny3335, 335 incidentally is my favourite, kind of lucky number really. Been trying to get hold of some sketches for a while. The Go Run Ride 8 certainly is on the list somewhere. When I can get hold of a pair, I'll be sure to test them out for you. Any of you interested in that Peg Turbo Shield, um, I think you should probably go and check out Kafuzi or Tim Gross's videos. They've both covered that shoe uh, in the last couple of weeks or so. I know Tim Gross has used it quite considerably in some wet conditions. So please do check out their videos if you're after some info on the Peg Turbo Shield. It's probably not something I'm gonna go for. I've got a, a pair of the original turbos still on the go and also the Peg Turbo 2s. I've been really enjoying those recently as well. So please do check out those other YouTubers. That side, look out for initial videos on both the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon and the Pegasus 36 Shield very, very soon. So the last week, we've seen some quite varied training for me, um, trying to keep my fitness up as those cold conditions come in. Back at the weekend on the Saturday, saw 10 miles in the A6 Glide Rides. You'll be able to catch my main review for the A6 Glide Ride in the end screen captions that pop up. So go and check that out if that's a shoe you're interested in. I went for around seven minutes, 45 pace. I was feeling a little bit under the weather still, and it was quite cold on that Saturday morning, cold conditions. I was feeling a little bit kind of a bit rusty, I guess. Neil Young says, rust never sleeps. I think he's right. If you don't keep yourself supple, keep yourself limber, and perhaps do a little bit of range of motion, it can feel like that sometimes on uh, some early morning runs, especially when you're getting a little older. You may have noticed got the cap on. You know it's cold when a bud's got the cap on. 
bit more resting, try and recover from this kind of congestion that I've had with the nose and the throat. Still there, it's still kind of lingering around. Hopefully it will disappear completely soon. On Monday, I took the Scott Speed Track 2s out on a local trail area. There's some quite a mixed terrain there, some compacted dirt, lots of mud, uh, lots of elevation. I've been testing that shoe out for run repeat. Going to be supplying them with a review of it relatively soon. So do watch out for that. Only five miles, but I think there's about 500 foot of elevation in there. Kept the pace down there. I was mainly concentrating on getting some elevation in really. So some kind of faster paced sections and then some slower recoveries. Haven't done any hill work for a few weeks so I wanted to try and keep that up. Um, it's something that I haven't done perhaps enough of over recent time but wanted to try and keep my hand in there. Almost went over a couple of times on some kind of hidden tree roots on that trail run. As I first went out for the run the sun was already starting to go down so by the time I got to this sort of trail area it was already pretty dark. Once I got into the trees it was kind of very very murky very, very dimly lit and a little bit scary. It's uh, kind of scary. These weird things, they always glow. They always glow. Once upon a time. All right, on. I think I'm going to get out of here. This is a bit scary. A spooky sight up on top of the hills. On to Tuesday, and I attended one of the Yeovil Town Road Running Club club runs. A couple of the faster chaps were looking to head out at around about seven minutes 30 per mile pace, which I thought would be ideal, considering I felt 100%. But despite feeling less than 100%, I decided to tag along. Luke, I am your father. We hit about eight miles, I think it was about seven minutes, 24 seconds per mile pace, about 500 foot of elevation, heart rate didn't go too high, and I managed to keep up with those speed merchants. I used the Peg Turbo 2 for this run, really enjoying these still, feeling really, really good. Haven't felt any real discomfort in this shoe. It's been a really fantastic training shoe thus far. Really holding up well, um, certainly durable, certainly versatile. Really do recommend this one. A really brilliant shoe for those higher paced training runs. I think it's really versatile too. Always leaves the legs feeling really good the next day. Never had a problem with these. So some rest on the following day. Again, trying to get rid of that congestion. And Thursday saw me doing around four miles, nice easy pace. It was around about eight minutes per mile pace. Um, just reining things in a bit. Again, in the A6 glide rides, they got absolutely saturated earlier on. Um, they did pick up quite a lot of water. I did find as well, after that run, the stance socks that I was wearing were absolutely saturated at the front. So the glide ride's gonna be one of those shoes that does kind of take in that water. It's not gonna kind of expel it too well. So do bear that in mind. Onto races for the remaining part of 2019 and into 2020. Whoa, that sounds really futuristic. A couple of the club members were looking to do the Goodwood Half Marathon in December. Alas, it falls on the same day as the Western Christmas Cracker. I'll be heading over to Western Supermare to do that 10k beach run once again. Had a good go at that race last year. Um, I found that that sand, which makes up the majority of the run, I think it's a good three quarters of it at least, really does sap the energy. It seems to sort of like suck it out of your legs. But this time I know what I'm letting myself in for a little bit and I really think I can improve on that time quite considerably. I went off way too fast in my last attempt so I need to rein that in a little bit, be a little bit more consistent across the first couple of miles. I do recall last year the wind was really battering me. Um, it was bitterly cold that day. Um, so let's hope for the same conditions again. What shoes for that race? It's going to be a tough decision, that one. Do I go with something like the Pegasus Turbo? I don't know how that's going to handle sand. If any of the viewers out there have used the turbos on some sort of sandy beaches or some very wet sand, please let me know in the comments. I'm very open to all suggestions there. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And when I say sand, I mean wet, soggy, irritating, icky, squelchy, cold, slippery, swampy types of sand. Though, Every cloud does have a silver lining because it's kind of on that beach sort of area. It means there's almost no elevation. So got to take the positives, right? I do have my eyes on another race, a 10K race on New Year's Day, which is the Chard Flyer. A 10K this time with a little more elevation on some quite quiet and narrow country lanes. So mostly a road race. There are some sections which are on some multi-terrain, but mostly road. 
a good opportunity to keep that fitness up over the Christmas break. I just missed out on 45 minutes last time. It can definitely improve on that this time out. Fitness is way higher. I know the heart rate is certainly more stabilized at higher paces now. And again, a little bit more experience under the belt. So I'll be looking to maybe get towards 43 minutes possibly. We shall see. I have half an eye on the Gloucester Half Marathon in January. I think it's the 19th of January, that one. This looks largely flat, doesn't seem like it's too far to travel either from my hometown. So it's definitely a possibility. I want there to be a decent enough amount of time to really train and work up to that half marathon, if I can. I think probably about 10 weeks is probably a good amount of time. So I can get back to that increased amount of training once again and have a good shot at getting under that one hour 30 kind of target that I really, really want to try and achieve. But that side, I need to do a little bit more homework on that event um, before I make a final decision on it. If you have raced that Gloucester Half Marathon previously, please do comment below and let me know your thoughts about it and your opinions. Any information is good to help make a decision about which race to apply to. Okay, guys, that's about all for me for today. Please do look out in the next few days for my initial videos on the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon and the Nike Pegasus 36 Shield. Please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. I'd very much appreciate it. Please do comment below about any of those races I've just been discussing. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and share it with any running friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.